Welcome. The following video or audio are the study of the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse of the King James 1611 Bible. Our family welcomes you to our household Bible ministry time. You may watch and listen with us. Our goal has been from Genesis to the book of Revelation. Each chapter by chapter we try. And topical preaching and teaching aids you can find by searching different topics. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Come and appreciate the word of God for our spiritual growth, our development in the word of God by these lessons. Please feel, feel, please feel welcome to upload and share our Bible study with family and friends. Like us, subscribe, write a comment, let us know you heard the message. The video or audio are not copyrighted and should be used and not abused. Thank you. Ephesians chapter 5 Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. No one else to follow but God. And we are his children. So we're talking to Christians. And walk in love as Christ also have loved us. So Christ our example of love, patience, endurance, long suffering, and has given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling Savior. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. We're supposed to sacrifice ourselves for other Christians to help them. It's not about self. It was never about self when Jesus Christ came on this earth. It was for us. That love that he's shown is our example. But fornication, and we saw this in Acts 15, verse 20, the council of Jerusalem, talking to the Gentiles. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become a saint. So, you are saying to God, put those sins away. Follow God. John tells us in 1 John, if we do sin, we, we got Jesus Christ. Confess our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. We have an advocate. But Paul comes out and says, listen, don't do it. Now, was Paul sinless? No. But let's strive our lives to be Christ-like. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking whatever it doesn't mount anything about the Bible is foolish talking nor jesting now jesting is pointless joking now I'm guilty of that one we gotta realize Jesus said in the Gospel of Matthew we will give an account for every idle word that we speak and Paul, scripture with scripture, says we better watch what we speak. There's nothing more to have a bunch of Christians get together and talk about sports or the news or something stupid that has nothing to do with God at all. It's a shame. Which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. Let's give God thanks. First Thessalonians 5.18. Ain't got nothing to say. Just say thank you God. For this ye know that no whoremonger. We know what a whoremonger is. Nor unclean person. Nor covetous man. Who is an idolater. Has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. So these sins. If they're not confessed. If they're not put under the blood. You will lose your mani mani your thousand year reign with Christ. That reign that we have as kings of king of kings in the millennium can be lost if we give in to sin. It's burnt up. Let no man deceive you with vain words. Again, nothing stupid, unpleasurable, worthless words. 
For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. And run that back to verses 3, 4, and 5. No sinner who is not saved has not had his sins washed in the blood of Jesus Christ is definitely going to enter the kingdom of God in Jesus Christ. They're going off to a lake of fire. Their words will be judged. And the wrath of God is upon them. John the Baptist book, He that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God. That wrath of God in the Bible for today's age is hell, the lake of fire. Be not ye therefore partakers with them, those that deceive, those that are sinners, those who do not do what God wants them to do. You're not supposed to be partakers. Now you want to stand the judgment seat of Christ and explain to God why your family, why your friends, why your employees, why your co-workers are more important than Jesus Christ? Go ahead. I don't want to be in those shoes myself. You have fun trying to explain to God why other people are more important than he is. When the Bible says, sets a standard for us, it's called division. It's called separation. That is a Bible doctrine. But you won't see that today. You see churches with signs, all are welcome. Anybody's welcome here. That is anti-scriptural. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. That runs back to Galatians 5.22. That fruit that the Holy Spirit gives us is good. It's right. And it's true. That matches Jesus Christ. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. You know, you've got to read your Bible. You've got to study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word. You've got to find out what you're doing. Is it, does it match the Bible for your conduct? And if it doesn't, you got trouble. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful workers, works of darkness, but rather reprove them. So, you get in any kind of ministry and the first thing somebody will come up to you, judge not, at least you be judged. Listen, I'm telling you that you're in darkness, you're without Jesus Christ, you're going to hell, and the Bible tells me I am to reprove you. I have all right to walk up to a guy who drives a, a beer truck and say, you know what your product does to people? You know what your product that you're putting on the shelf does to families? Do you know what that product you're trying to sell does to human body, organs? I have the right, that darkness, to go up to him and say, hey, it's wrong. That's what the Bible says. All fruit, walk up to them and tell them where they're wrong. That's a Bible doctrine. For it is right, I'm excuse me, for it is right. For it is a shame. Even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. So there is, it may be stretching it, a darkness, no fellowship. There is a verse that you can apply to someone with secret societies. You have no pact with anybody who keeps a secret. Tattletailers, gossipers, religions, and their secrets. You have no place for that. You have no right to be in those religions. You'd be out and get yourself in a Bible-believing church and do right. And tell them where they're wrong. Walk up to the Jehovah Witness and tell them that Jesus Christ is God and show them the scripture. Rebuke them. Reprove them. Wherefore he saith, God, awake thou that sleepest. Arise from the dead and Christ shall give thee light. We're not supposed to be dead. We're not supposed to be lying down. We're supposed to be alive. We're supposed to be birds going all the world to preach the gospel. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools. The Bible condemns you as a fool. The Bible has nothing good to say. No, I take that back. There's one good thing about a fool. I forget what it is. But of all the fools in the Bible, there's only one good thing that's ever said about that fool. Everything else, it's a warning against. By the wisest man named Solomon in the book of Proverbs. 
You're never called to be foolish as a Christian. But as wise, you'll see, be wise. 14. Awake thou that sleepest and rise from the dead, that Christ shall give thee. I said that we're not supposed to be dead. We're supposed to be walking, living, going. See that ye walk. Walk. See, if we're dead, we're, we're, we're zombies. We're living zombies that the world is afraid of. But we're not, you know, going out there for brains. We're going out there with the gospel. This flesh is to be dead. We're supposed to be walking correctly, redeeming the time. Now, here we go. Because the days are evil. Matthew 6, 33. God knows. Hey, I know that world is wicked. I know everything that has to do with them is wicked. The Bible tells you it's wicked. But you go out there and do right. You go out there and be light. You go out there and reprove them. You go out there and tell them what I told you to say. And I'm going to tell you, where's the masses of people getting saved? The Bible's already told us, many will go to Broadway and few will go through the street. We've already been warned about the world. Jesus said, marvel not if the world hates you. Know that it hated me first. So don't come off with the Bible as a Christian spec. Everything to be hunky-dory and wonderful. No, the Bible says otherwise. Wherefore? Be ye not unwise. Again, don't be foolish. But understand what the will of the Lord is. So we got to find out what God's will is. God's will is that a man believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. God's will is after you're saved to be baptized. God's will is that you go in all the world and preach the gospel. God's will is that you grow from an infant to age. God's will is you study to show thyself approved unto God. God's will is that you adhere to what the Bible has to say. God's will is that you live right. That's the will of God. Be not drunk with wine. Wearing is excess. Now, some people read, will read that without the comma, be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess. You know, oh, I can drink wine, but just not intoxicated. No, wine makes you excess. Any kind of wine in you is, is wrong wine. It has nothing to do for us Christians. It's not valuable. He say, well, what about these countries that have bad water in that? That's non-intoxicating wine that would be grape juice fresh not fermented but be filled with the spirit so instead of getting intoxicated get intoxicated with the holy spirit let him fill you up and not the wine it's far more better to be filled with the holy spirit and not to be filled with intoxicating liquor intoxicated liquor makes you foolish the holy spirit will make you wise be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves. Did you get speaking? To yourselves. Did you get that? In Psalms. That's your book of Psalms. That's your hymnal. That's your God-ordained hymnal of 66 books of your Bible. In hymns. Okay. And spiritual songs. Singing and make melody in your hearts to the Lord. It says speaking to yourselves. You ought to have a song in your heart. Giving thanks. Giving. That's a verb. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And Paul says in everything give thanks. Praise the Lord evermore. In all things, even the bad, as well as the good. Submitting yourselves one to another, Christian to Christian. Romans 15, 1. Christians to Christians in the fear of God. We're supposed to be a family. 
We're supposed to be a safe family, edifying, helping each other. That's gone away. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands. No one else's husband. Your husband. As unto the Lord. As much as you reverence the Lord Jesus Christ, you're to reverence that man you married. Now we're, we get the husband. For the husband is the head of the wife. That's been since Genesis 3. That's when God rebukes Eve and says, He'll be ruler over you. Not th those words, but even as Christ is the head of the church, He is the Savior of the body. So marriage becomes a symbol and a type of Christian church relationship with Jesus Christ. You know why the church is failing today? Because the wives will not submit to their husbands, and thus the church will not submit to Jesus Christ. There's an order that's been broken. Therefore, as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. The only one that's in charge of a wife is her husband. In all manners of deeds and, and works. Not the pastor, not a man boss. We, when we went through Proverbs 31, we read that a woman can do work without having a man boss over her. She can do work outside the house or in the house or outside the house and still have her husband over her and be perfectly right and well being with God. But a woman to go out working and have a man that's over her that's not her husband that violates the scripture. Now, I know things are hard today. You've got to have two people working. Why? Why must a woman in the house go out and get a job to help with? Because we have left the Bible. You can't expect America to get back to the Bible when no one wants to read and study the Bible. You can't expect this great revival when the women in the church are not given to their husbands. And we're going to read about the men in a minute. The men are just as bad. Husbands, love your wives. How many Christian husbands I've been with and get them talking about their wives and not in good condemnation? But talk bad of them. That's wrong. That's wicked. He says, love your wives. That's a commandment of Paul. How? Even as Christ also loved the church. Well, how did Christ love the church? He gave himself for it. A husband ought to be able to, I will die for my wife as Christ died for the church. That's very much lacking. Very much. As Christ also loved the church. What was that love? That was a sacrificial love. You ought to think of her more than you think of yourself. And we'll read about that in a minute. Gave himself for it. That he, Jesus, might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. You want a proper marriage? That wife is submit to the husband. That husband is to love his wife as all things. Better than golf. Better than a sport. More than anything. Not just once a year in February. You know, why is it we got one day in a year we're supposed to love our wives? We got one one day in a year in America we're supposed to give thanks to God. We got one day a year we're supposed to celebrate the, the birth of Jesus Christ. We got one day in a year we're supposed to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. Why is America this Christian nation that we only just give it one day and not 365 days? We all not to say, okay, Christmas is a pagan on. We just should celebrate Jesus Christ all 365 days. And look, look, okay, yesterday is Valentine's Day, which, which is a pagan holiday, pure pagan. But, you know, all of a sudden, all the diamond commercials, all the flower commercials, is that what it's really about? You mean you tell me you can't think of your wife just out of the blue coming home from work? You know what, I'm going to stop at this store, I'm going to get her a bar of chocolate, or I'm going to get her a, whatever. You can't do that in uh, November 7th? You can't do that May 23rd. 
What's the problem here? Why do we only honor our mother and father once once a year? That you got billboards down here that said write your parents. Really? You need a billboard to tell you write your parents. And then you want to be a Christian nation. You want to have a revival and all that. And you're not listening. You can't adhere to humans. Never mind God. That he, Jesus, might present it for what? The marriage, the church, to himself a glorious church. Not having spot. You read Revelation 3 about the Laodicean church age? Or wrinkle. Or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. God expects your marriage to be, what's it say? What are we supposed to be before Christ? The fact is, we got the judgment seat of Christ because we are spotted. We do have wrinkles. We are blemished. And those things are going to be tried by fire, and that which is wood, hay, or stubble has got to burn away. So are men. All right, we had a little commercial. We had wives submit to your husbands. Husbands love your wife. All right, we had a little commercial. We're talking about the church. We go back. Go right back on the men again. Paul is blasting the husbands. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. Ooh. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. That's kind of interesting. You're to love that wife as much as you love yourself. You need deodorant, she needs deodorant. You need underclothes, she needs underclothes. She, you need a haircut, she needs her hair done. No man ever yet hated his own flesh. Every man loves himself. So, love that wife. That's to be natural, but nourish it and cherish it. Even as the Lord, the church. Doesn't the Lord give you things? Doesn't the Lord take care of you? Take care of that wife. There's going to be husbands out there. I can think of quite a few of them. That they're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ and they're going to be losers. And they're going to be wives that are going to stand at the judgment seat of Christ and they're going to be losers. And some of them, I'm going to say, I don't know. Some of them are going to, this stuff, it's really in the Bible? Really? Yes, it is. A marriage needs time, talk, that's the biggest one, that's the one that's lacking, touch, and to be together. Time, talk, touch, and together. No man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it even as the Lord the church. Hey, listen, I, I'm a sinful husband. I'm a sinful father. I've not done all that's right. I've got to plead the blood of Jesus Christ. But how much our husband, the Lord Jesus Christ, has us to write? How well has he taken care of us? For we are members of his body. We're going back to the church again. The family represents the bride of Christ to Jesus Christ. And the bride of Christ represents a husband and wife relationship called the marriage. Churches are breaking down because families have broken down. One thing that it gets my mind, I don't know if it irritates her, but one thing it gets, when we go to the restaurant, they're all sitting at the table with their phones. You can't look up and say anything? You, you got to talk by phone? That's wrong. That's not Bible. Text me. That's not in the Bible. Talk. Talk. Put the phone down and talk. Not just an order. Pretty soon it'll be happening where you just, at the phone, at the table, you just text to the waitress. Uh, for no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourished and cherished it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, and of his flesh, and of his bones. 
So Jesus Christ is flesh and bones. He's alive. No blood. No blood. The blood was spilled out. The blood, the Bible says in Leviticus, was given for a sacrifice. I am Jesus Christ. I will be one with Jesus Christ, married to him one day. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother. Who said that? That was Adam. So Paul and Jesus both acknowledged that there was a man named Adam, Genesis 2, 24. Adam was the first husband. And Adam had to say, For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. So the church means me as a bride of Christ, and Jesus Christ, we will be one flesh. And we talked about the other night, we talked about uh, there's one body, one spirit, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God the Father, and 26,000 Bibles. Can't be. You got a husband and wife that are one. She takes the husband's name. She keeps her, her, her father's name. That's a violation of the scripture. In the eyes of God, Eve became Adam. And God called their name both Adam. One. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and, they sh and shall be joined unto his wife, and no other woman. And they too, husband and wife, shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery. Oh, here's another mystery. What is this mystery? That marriage has always been a sign between you and Jesus Christ. And I speak, this is a mystery, I speak concerning Christ and the church. And marriages are followed up today. And the church is followed up. You want the church right? You want a revival? You got to get the churches right. You got to get the families right. You got to get the husband and wife right. You got to get the wife and the husband right. Before you get any revival. According to the Bible. Nevertheless. Let every one of you in particular so love his wife. Look how he's nailing the men. He, he told the wife, hey, submit unto your husband. Wife, submit yourself unto your husband. He says it a couple of times. But man, he starts blasting the husband to the end of the chapter. Nothing gets me mad to have a man say, oh, the old lady. Well, if, you, if she's the old lady, then you're the old man. It gets me angry when they talk about, well, listen, you're the one I think you said I do. It aggravates me when men talk about their wives like that. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself. And then close and see, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. 1 Peter 3, 2. So there's to be love. There's to be togetherness. There's to be a relationship between a man and woman that you have no other relationship such as anywhere else. And that's what Paul speaks about. A husband and wife. 